We are in the southern Bighorn Basin and we're doing paleontology and geochemical field work to learn something about the PETM or the Paleocene-Eocene Thermal Maximum. And we're interested in studying the geologic as well as the biotic response to that global warming event. The PETM stands for Paleocene-Eocene Thermal Maximum. It starts at about 55.8 million years ago. It's a period of, of rapid climate change and extreme change in ecosystems, in geochemical cycles. It's mu a much more dramatic temperature rise than other episodes of global warming in the past. We've got a release of carbon and a change in climate and a lot of people are interested in it, a lot of scientists are interested in it because it's the best geological analog we have to present day global warming. One of the reasons the PETM is being studied in the Western United States is that the Western United States during Paleocene and Eocene time had a, a large number of deposits, sedimentary deposits that were created by rivers. And then the other part of it, of course, is that the Western United States is relatively dry, and so not only are the rocks there, but the rocks are relatively well exposed, and so you can actually go and study them. So girls, let's get our backpacks on. Let's get all the tools that we're gonna need for the day. Make sure we've got those picks, the shovels. What I'm hoping to see is I'm going to be looking at soil morphologic features, actual attributes of the fossil soils, and I'm hoping then to be able to say something about precipitation back 55 million years ago. One of the things that I'm interested in is soil color. You can see that some of the rocks are purple here, at least in this trench, and some of them are red. And that actually says something about soil hydrology. The red is a little bit better drained soil. This is a little bit more poorly drained. And you can also see some gray, gray models. These actually represent fossil root traces that required water to be moving through the soil and actually depleting it of iron. And some of that iron accumulated then as these iron nodules. So in fact, here are some of them. I got little iron nodules sitting on my hand. We're collecting those so that I can geochemically analyze those in the laboratory because the amount of iron that's found in them actually correlates to precipitation at the time the soil formed. So when I look at the rocks that lie below the rocks that I'm studying, they indicate pretty waterlogged conditions. But if you get into then the overlying rocks, the beginning of the PETM, we see certain changes just in the rock types to indicate that conditions might have gotten drier. So my hypothesis at this point is that with the beginning of temperature increases, you actually get an increase in drying. You get aridity starting at that point. We're going back to the area that's where Sarah found those leaves the other day. I want to do more prospecting around there. To find an average fossil locality is often several days of work. The first really good plant fossil locality in the PETM took me 10 years to find. It's a very rare thing, but once you find one, you can really work there for several weeks or even longer collecting with a lot of people and find thousands and thousands of fossils. This is 0805, right? Is that a, a lichen pod? It or... sure is. So it, it's the fruit of a legume. That's something in the bean family. And uh, this is the end that would have been attached to the plant down here. And you can see sort of a, this is the shape of the pod like this. And then there would have been a seed here and a seed back in here. One of the characteristic things about the really good PETM floras that we have is that they have a very high diversity and abundance of legumes. And we don't really know exactly why that is yet, but we have two ideas. One of them is that it tends to be a family that has 
pretty good representation in areas where the climate is seasonally dry. The other hypothesis is that uh, the legumes did very well during the Paleocene-Eocene thermal maximum because there was a high level of CO2 in the atmosphere. And CO2 goes up in the atmosphere, legumes become more successful, and that's been shown to some degree in greenhouse experiments today. Doug, that's that red, that's that red bed that uh, I was collecting down a ways that had the nice jaws, right? We uh, are interested in the PETM specifically as vertebrate paleontologists for a number of different reasons, but maybe the most significant reason is because at 55.8 million years ago, corresponding to this global warming event, we see a very dramatic change in the mammalian faunas. This is a time when we see the origin of modern orders of mammals. So it's a really important time for mammalian evolution. It looks a little bit like Frank's locality where we got the hundreds of horse teeth. From. Really? Yeah. And, you know, maybe there's a skull there, too. So we're still finding bone here on the surface. And what we've got is a skeleton of a mammal 55.8 million years old that lived during the PETM. So here's a right and left jaw of an animal called Ictosian, which is a hooved animal that's extinct now, but back then it was a very common animal. And what's really interesting about this Ictosian is that it's very small. That's something that you see with the mammals during the PETM is that they tend to be very small. I'm not exactly sure why animals are going to be getting smaller in response to a warming event. It's the right upper M3 of Ictosian parvus. An explanation that's been put out there is that uh, potentially um, different concentrations of CO2 in the atmosphere might be causing some of these shifts in body size. And that has to do with the nutritional level of the plants that the animals are eating. It's absolutely clear that there are chemical, physical, and biological after effects of the warming that play out for hundreds of thousands of years. It's kind of sobering to think about that, that the things that we're doing right now are not going to just go away if we stop doing them. Humans were not around when the PETM occurred, so we know that it has some other natural cause. But despite having a natural cause, not a human cause, such as global warming today might have, there is much information to be gained about modern global warming by looking at it in the ancient record.